Hi, uh, this is another update on my research blog, Discover Social Sciences. Uh, this time, of course, I am devoting this update to what's going on outside to the COVID-19 epidemic, to the social and economic consequences uh, of the epidemic. Uh, just one thing I just noticed as I was browsing through my past video updates, I usually connect every video update with an update on my blog. But I forgot to tell you how to connect them exactly. So under the video in the description box, you have that link to my the general link uh, to my blog, discoversocialsciences.com. Uh, you click on that link, you go on the blog, and on the blog you have a text update uh, which has the same title as this video that you are watching. Huh? And this is how it connects. So in the text update on the blog, you have like the uh, more elaborate information uh, as regards what I am saying in the video. Okay, right. So now my first thoughts. Uh, I had like reorganized myself completely. Uh, because, as you probably know, universities are in lockdown all across Europe, in Poland too, in my country too. And I already know that the lockdown will last at least until Easter, up until the Easter break. Uh, so I have to switch to distance learning, to distance teaching. Uh, and I am placing a lot of content online. And uh, r right now, for example, at the university we have faced an... Uh, something we didn't expect, our e-learning platform, when it uh, has to be like a standalone device for distance learning, is not sufficient. It is, uh, uh, its capacity is just too small for assuring the distance learning to all the students. So I'm switching to distance learning. I have a lot of free time to write and I really have to wrap my mind around what is happening right now. And um, what is happening right now, I am trying to understand it as a scientist. And as a scientist, uh, I, am, I have been working those last months a lot on uh, the application of artificial intelligence to study collective intelligence. And so far, as I have been sending around uh, draft papers to different journals, the answer I had from editors and reviewers was like, look man, the idea you try, you are trying to get across is interesting, but you need to like formulate it better in a clearer, more intelligible way. The concept of collective intelligence is attractive, but how uh, it differs from the concept of culture, for example, how do your mathematical models differ from classical stochastic approach? And um, as I am trying to understand the present situation, like really to understand in the spirit of William James and his radical empiricism, I have one thought that this virus, COVID-19, is really collectively intelligent. Hmm? Uh, it doesn't have any brain, it doesn't have any nervous system, it doesn't even have any vital functions because viruses do not have vital functions. Viruses are essentially uh, bits of information about how life can reproduce because they have just a chain of RNA or ribonucleic acid and they don't, have, they don't even have DNA. Huh? They are just bits of information about how to reproduce but there is no information in them about what to reproduce. Anyway, that COVID-19 is something at the limit of the alive and the inanimate. And uh, why do I think it is collectively intelligent? Look, if I remember, or if I go back uh, to the events from 2003, to the epidemic of the SARS virus, so the grand-granddad of, uh, uh, of COVID-19, that one in 2003, it was, uh, that virus was like Dalton Brothers jumping into a bank. Huh? Uh, it's uh, guns out and give me all your money right now. Uh, COVID-19 is more insidious. Huh? It uh, spreads rather than kills. Huh? Uh, 
and it does so simply by having a long chain of RNA, a long chain of ribonucleic acid. And that long chain takes a long time to reproduce. And as it takes a long time to reproduce, it gives our body the time to respond. Uh, we can respond in various ways. And uh, as the virus re reproduces or proliferates quite slowly inside our body, it can test us. So if our body has a very strong immune uh, response, we kill the virus and it is over. If we have a slightly weaker immune response, we pass to the phase of infection. So we don't kill it immediately. It doesn't kill us, but there is that window of time when we contaminate other people or spread the virus without being really sick by ourselves. And it is and it all gives the virus the possibility to multiply or to maximize its own biomass or to maximize the infected biomass of humans. It is very much like our civilization. It is what we have learned over millennia. We have learned, for example, that instead of having a dozen kids per household and letting most of them die, because this is what happened in primitive societies back in the day, we'd better have less children, but uh, give them the conditions to bring them up all the way to adulthood and to give them education. And this is how civilization has developed. So that virus is very simple. It doesn't have any nervous system, but in my opinion, it is collectively intelligent. And as I see it, we are now playing a game with that virus. It is a game of two collective intelligences, our own human collective intelligence and the collective intelligence of the COVID-19. Why do I call it a game? Because it is a situation when each of the parties, so both our civilization and the virus, can benefit from delayed reaction or from playing on time. If we try to kill the virus straight away, we can fail. Hmm? We, uh, we can fail. We, we are most likely to fail right now. Huh? But if we give ourselves some time, because lockdowns are essentially a way to gain some time. If we give ourselves some time, we give in, in, in the same way we give ourselves the, a possibility to observe the epidemic, to observe the game that the virus plays with us, and to develop a more informed response. The virus, yes, it plays the game that I have just described with that long chain of ribonucleic acid. It just reproduces so slowly that it has the time to play with us, to give us the time to make our move. So it is very much like a game of chess. Uh, I think that two years ago I read, uh, or, or, or even more, maybe five years ago, I read that sentence uh, in the writings of Orhan Pamuk, the Turkish writer who was granted the Nobel Prize in, in Literature, who wrote that uh, Western people make a gross mistake by interpreting the game of chess as a game of war. He said that uh, in the very spirit of the Levant, of the Oriental culture, the game of chess is supposed to represent the way our mind works and the way that life works as a game with a limited number of moves where each player needs to give another player the time to respond. Okay, these are my very like uh, very chaotic thoughts about what's going on. You will find more in my update uh, uh, on the blog today. Right now I am trying to, to write and publish every day so as to force myself like to think at a consistent pace. Anyway, click on the link below the video. You will go to the, to, to the platform of my blog. At the blog you will find an update with the same title as this video. And there you can, you can read more. Bye.